This is the fourth video in my series of videos that I'm making on Edmund Landau's Foundations of Analysis. In the last few videos I've looked at the piano axioms, natural numbers, fractions and rational numbers and in this video we're going to be moving on to the next stage of the development in the construction of the, the real numbers and we're going to be looking at cuts of rational numbers. There is a lot of ground to cover um, in this particular section so I'm not going to be able to go through everything. Uh, I've tried to pick out uh, the most important theorems and I'll go through some of the proofs but I definitely won't be able to go through all of the proofs but let's make a start anyway. So let's start off with the definition of a cut of rational numbers. Uh, this is actually only the first um, formulation uh, that I'm going to give for the, the definition of um, of cuts of rational numbers. There's going to be another equivalent definition that I'm going to give in a, in a few minutes but we need to go through a couple of theorems before we get to that. So let's start with this one then. So definition 28, um, a set of rational numbers is called a cut if it contains a rational number but does not contain all rational numbers. Um, every rational number of the set is smaller than every number not belonging to the set and it does not contain a greatest rational number. So First, first things to note here is uh, what we're calling a cut is uh, a set of sets. So um, the, the rational numbers themselves are sets, they're sets of fractions, and the cut is a set of rational numbers, hence it's a set of uh, sets of fractions. Uh, but we don't really need to think about it in, in that way, we just need to think about it as a set of rational numbers really. But it's worth pointing out that these, these things are very different objects to what we have been dealing with previously. Uh, the first criteria here guarantees that um, the empty set uh, is not considered to be a cut, uh, nor if we just took the set of all rational numbers, that would not be considered a cut either. So a, a cut is something that is some uh, subset, some genuine... Um, a proper subset of uh, the set of rational numbers but not just any subset it's got to it's got a bit more structure to it than that um, the numbers of the the set the cut are um, often called lower numbers and the numbers not belonging to the set are sometimes called upper numbers so what this is saying is that every lower number is smaller than every upper number um, so uh, part number three here, uh, the cut does not contain a greatest rational number. So you, you can almost visualize this um, this open cut. Um, you could compare it to kind of an open interval. Um, so if you took the open interval 0 or 1, there's no greatest number in there. I, I wouldn't take that too literally at this stage. Um, but it's that kind of idea that uh, for every number that you choose you can always go just a little bit further up but without going outside of the out, outside of the set. Uh, definition 29 uh, the symbols that we use for uh, cuts by the way are often lowercase Greek symbols um, in comparison to rational numbers where we used uh, capital letters um, X, Y, things like that. Here we're going to be using uh, Xi, Eta, whatever else we need to use. Uh, so Xi is equal to Eta. If every lower number for Xi is a lower number for Eta, and every lower number for Eta is a lower number for Xi. And theorems 116, 117 and 118 it's the usual the usual thing really uh, that we've seen with fractions and we've seen with uh, rational numbers we need to show that uh, this equality this definition of equality leads to uh, something that is actually an equivalence relation um, so just as with rational numbers and fractions the, the proofs of these are trivial so much so that um, Landau doesn't even bother to um, to give any explicit proofs in, in, the, in the book. So, uh, I'm going to move on now to a couple of basic theorems that are going to lead to another uh, possible, another equivalent formulation for the definition of a cut. So this is just a, a couple of short theorems that are presented um, 
in Landau's book, Theorem 119 and Theorem 120, um, there's not really much content to these. It's not really anything that we didn't already know. In fact, uh, the, the proofs of these theorems uh, follow immediately from the definition of a, a cut. Um, so if x is an upper number for uh, xi, and x1 is greater than x, then x1 is also an upper, upper number for xi, and similarly for lower numbers, if x is a lower number for xi and x1 is less than x, then x1 is a lower number for xi. And uh, this allows us, uh, this one here allows us to um, reformulate our definition of a cut. Uh, so this is, uh, this definition, it's given as an equivalent definition in Landau's book, but it's not given a, a specific number. Um, so a, a set of rational numbers is called a cut if the set is not empty and there is a rational number not belonging to it. So that's basically the same as the first part um, in the uh, original definition. But what's changed is, is this one. So with every number it contains, that's the set, the set also contains all numbers smaller than that number. So that's really where uh, this theorem 120 is coming in. So it's just a, a re reformulation of that second part of the, the original definition. If you remember in the original definition, it said that every lower number is uh, smaller than every upper number. But there's no mention here of, of upper numbers. Um, and uh, part three, uh, with every number it contains, the set also contains a greater one. Again, that's really uh, the same as the third part. So it's really this, uh, from the original definition, so it's really the second part here that's been reformulated. And it depends what uh, kind of, what we're trying to achieve really, what we're trying to prove as to which definition we're going to go for. Um, often this definition uh, tends to be a bit more workable, um, but there will be occasions where we'll um, go for the, the original definition. So we've got to be prepared to use either uh, definition. They're equivalent, so there's no problem with that. So that's the um, basic definition of a cut and some basic um, properties. So let's move now on to ordering. So let's just have a quick look at ordering um, on cuts. There's really not much to, to go through here, so I should be able to get through this in a, a jiffy, to be honest with you. Uh, so definition 30, um, if xi and eta are cuts, then xi is greater than eta. If there exists a lower number for xi, which is an upper number for eta, Definition 31 um, for less than, so if xi and eta are cuts, then xi is less than eta. If there exists an upper number for xi, which is a lower number for eta. And then theorem 123 um, shows that all cuts can be uh, compared and that a given cut lies in a definite uh, position relative to every other cut. Um, so there's no kind of cuts that um, can't be compared. Any two uh, unequal cuts, you can always decide which is the greater and which is the, the lesser. Um, or you can decide if they're actually equal to each other. Um, I, I wasn't actually going to do it, but I, I'm going to go through the, the proof of this. It's, it's pretty straightforward to do. So uh, these two cases are going to be um, incompatible with one another because the definition of equality of cuts says that um, every um, upper number, sorry, every lower number of xi is going to be a lower number of eta and every lower number of eta is going to be a lower number of xi. But this says that there is an, uh, a lower number of xi which is an upper number of uh, eta, but that contradicts the, the statement of equality. So these two cases are mutually incompatible for the same reason effectively uh, this case and this case are going to be mutually incompatible. Uh, so let's just have a look at this now. So if psi um, is greater than eta, that means that we can find um, an x, which is um, a lower number for uh, psi, uh, but it's also an upper number for um, eta. And similarly, if we look at the, the other case, uh, xi is less than eta, then we can find uh, y, which is an, uh, uh, a, a lower number 
for eater but an upper number for Xi. Um, well, going back to the, the original definition of a, of a cut, uh, every lower number of a cut is, uh, is smaller than every upper number. So if X is a, a lower number for Xi, and Y is an upper number for Xi, then X must be less than Y. So these x's and y's, they're rational numbers. And similarly, x is an upper number for xi, and y is a lower number. Uh, sorry, for, uh, is, is an upper number for eta, y is a lower number for eta. So we get in this situation where we've got x is less than y, and y is less than x. But that contradicts theorem 81, um, which says that for rational numbers, you can have exactly one of... Um, x is equal to y, x is less than y, or uh, x is greater than y. So we, we can't have both of these. So therefore, uh, these two situations um, in relation to cuts are mutually, um, uh, mutually exclusive. Um, they're incompatible, mutually incompatible. That's the word that I'm looking for. Okay, definition 32 and definition 33 just give a meaning to uh, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, really in the obvious way. Not really much for me to say about that. And then the rest of this section, which it only lasts for a couple of pages, really goes through really trivial uh, propositions such as, um, if I just give an example, just let me get rid of this. So an example of just how trivial the theorems get, um, you get something like if uh, Xi is greater than or equal to Eta, then uh, Eta is uh, less than or equal to Xi. Um, and they're, they're all pretty much of this kind of level of simplicity. Uh, they've still got to be proved, they're still necessary. Uh, we still need to verify that things behave as we expect them to be. Ad admittedly, we can't just take these things for granted. As I've kind of said before, attention to detail is the, is the key here and, and not trying to take any shortcuts and um, whatever for our own convenience, we've got to go through thoroughly. But I'm, I'm gonna skip uh, the proofs, uh, the theorems and the proofs because I really want to get onto the more uh, interesting, more substantial uh, theorems. So next we're gonna move on to addition of cuts. Okay, so let's have a look now at addition of cuts. Now, uh, for, for example, rational numbers and fractions, when we w went on to addition of fractions and addition of rational numbers, we kicked off straight away more or less with a, a definition of addition of fractions. That's not gonna be the case here. Uh, what we're gonna have to do here is gonna have to construct a, a cut um, that is gonna be effectively the sum of two other cuts. Um, but we don't know that it's a cut from the outset. So all we know is that it's a set, it's a set of numbers. We need to show that it's actually a cut before we can define it as the sum uh, of, of two cuts. Because we want a, the sum of two cuts to be another cut after all. So let Xi and Eta be cuts, then the set of all rational numbers, which are representable in the form X plus Y, where X is a lower number for Xi and Y is a lower number for Eta, is a cut. So just to emphasize here, we are assuming that this set of rational numbers is just a set. It's our job now to show that it's actually a cut and therefore when we add two cuts together in this particular way, um, then we get a, another cut and we don't just get some random set. And there's also a second part to this theorem. Uh, no number of this set can be written as a sum of an upper number for Xi and an upper number for eta. Now this doesn't mean that um, upper numbers can't come into it at all. Uh, we could choose, for example, an upper number for xi and a lower number for eta, and that may be um, in, our, uh, in our set, uh, this set of rational numbers, or vice versa, we could choose an upper number for eta and a lower number for xi. It's not forced to be, but this doesn't exclude that possibility. This just excludes the possibility that if we choose an upper number from xi, and an upper number from eta, that the sum of those two 
upper numbers is not going to be in our set. So um, the way this is going to happen is we're going to use the, the, the second um, definition really of a, a cut uh, to show that this set is actually a, a cut, show that it satisfies all of those conditions, those three conditions. Um, but we know from the outset that Xi and Eta are cuts, so we know uh, we can apply the, the, the properties that are outlined in either definition, we can apply any of those properties to either Xi or Eta. Uh, in isolation, um, but we're going to work with that second definition to show that this set of rational numbers is actually a cut. So, okay, let's have a look. So, the first for the first criteria, uh, we need to show that the set is not empty, uh, and we need to show that there is a rational number that is not in the set itself, so that it doesn't contain all rational numbers. So let's choose, uh, let um, x be a, a lower number for uh, xi and y be a lower number uh, for eta. Then x plus y is in the set. Okay, so that shows that the set is is not empty because it's this number x plus y is ex of exactly the right form. The set of all numbers representable in the form x plus y, where x is a lower number of psi and y is a lower number for eta. Uh, now let um, x one be an upper number for psi and y one be an upper number for uh, eta. So now we know that for any cut uh, every lower number is smaller than every um, upper number. So in particular we can say that uh, x is less than x1 so applying the the definition of cut to specifically psi and now we do the same for eta to get that y is less than y1. From this we conclude that x plus y is less than x1 plus y1. Um, this is something that's actually proved in the section on rational numbers. I, I didn't um, myself go through the proof um, but it is there that if you've, if you've got this kind of situation then this results. So uh, the key observation here is to note that um, x plus y uh, is an arbitrary um, uh, arbitrary number basically from our, our set because x and y could just be any uh, lower numbers for psi and eta. So this could be any number from, from our set. Um, and in particular we need to note that x plus y is not equal to x1 plus y1. So what this is showing is that for arbitrarily chosen upper numbers for psi and eta, uh, it can never be equal, the, the sum of those two upper numbers can never be equal to uh, an arbitrary sum of lower numbers from psi and eta. So therefore x1 plus y1, where x1 and y1 are arbitrarily chosen upper numbers for psi and eta respectively, um, is, is not contained in our set. And this, uh, that finishes off uh, the first uh, criteria for our um, from our definition of a cut that the cut that the set shouldn't be uh, empty and nor should it contain every rational number so it doesn't contain this x1 plus y1 so let's have a look at part two now so for part two uh, we need to show that uh, for every uh, rational number that the set contains that it also contains every um, a number that's smaller than it. So we know that x plus y, this x plus y that we that we chose here, is in our set. So now let's choose z. Some rational number z which is less than x plus y. And we can do this because um, we saw 
I, I think it was in the second video that I made that um, uh, for every fraction there is a smaller fraction so there's no smallest fraction and these fractions obviously determine the uh, the rational numbers so there is no smallest rational number so whatever x plus y be we can always choose a rational number that's smaller than it okay and here I, I just need to go off on a little bit of a digression I'm going to do this in a different colour so um, let's take for example the equation x plus y times u equals z. Now what I've shown in, in previous videos is that this has a, a solution. Uh, the solution is written uh, u equals z over x plus y. So therefore x plus y times z over x plus y is equal to z. Might seem obvious, but um, again, remember that this is these are just symbols that we we use to represent certain numbers. And just because we've got the x plus y here and the x plus y here doesn't mean that they it doesn't automatically follow that they just cancel in the sense that we're kind of used to uh, things cancelling out. Okay, but remember that z is less than x plus y. So what we can say then is that x plus y times z over x plus y is less than x plus y times 1. Okay, so let's bring that back over here. So x plus y times z over x plus y is certainly less than x plus y times 1. So what this means then is that z over x plus y is less than 1. Because we've got the x plus y here and the x plus y here. Again, this is something that's it's proved there in, in, in the section on rational numbers. I, I didn't specifically go through it, um, but it is there. Um, that if you've got this situation then it's almost like the x plus y is just kind of cancel out. So in particular we get x times z over uh, x plus y is less than x times 1 which equals x and y times uh, z over x plus y is less than y times 1 which equals y. So therefore, since x and y are lower numbers for psi and eta respectively, then by theorem 120, which I proved um, earlier in, the, in this video, that means that this is a lower number for uh, psi and this is a lower number for eta. And therefore, x times z over x plus y plus... Uh, y times z over x plus y. This number is in our set because it's a sum of two lower numbers, one from psi, one from eta. It's exa of exactly the right form. Uh, but this is equal to x plus y. So using uh, distributivity here of uh, rational numbers, again, something that's proved in the section on rational numbers. I didn't go through it specifically. But it is, I, I did mention it, but I didn't actually go through it. Uh, times z over x plus y. But we know that x plus y times z over x plus y from what I've done up here is equal to z. So therefore, uh, because this is in the set, and this is equal to z, then z is in the set. Okay, so therefore if we choose an arbitrary number in our set 
of the form x plus y and we choose a number that's smaller than that, we can guarantee that that smaller number will also be in the set using this, this argument. So that completes the second part of um, the definition of a, of a cut. So now finally let's have a look at the third part. So part three. So um, let's choose uh, in our cut eta, uh, sorry not eta, in xi, uh, we know that x is a lower number. Well, let's choose a greater lower number, x1, uh, a lower number for uh, xi such that x1 is greater than x. So this is straight from the definition of uh, a cut applied to uh, the cut xi. For every number in the, uh, in the cut, in the set, there is a, a greater number um, that is also in the set. And therefore, uh, x1 uh, plus y is greater than x plus y. So y is the, uh, the lower number that we chose for, uh, for eta. And therefore, this number x1 plus y is of exactly the right form that it needs to be. It's uh, the sum of a lower number from xi and a lower number from eta. So therefore, it must be in the set. But it's greater than the x plus y that we chose. But remember, the x plus y was arbitrarily chosen. So for any arbitrarily chosen number of our sets, we can always find a number that is going to be greater than that arbitrarily chosen number. So that's the third criteria satisfied. So the conclusion at this stage is that uh, our set of rational numbers of all of the numbers representable in this particular form is indeed a cut. Okay, so continuing on with um, addition of cuts, we've just constructed, um, we started with a set and we, we, we showed that um, it actually turned out to be a cut. Well, this cut that we've just constructed as part of theorem 129, we denote by uh, xi plus eta. So the sum of uh, these two cuts, xi and, and eta. Uh, theorem 130 and 131, uh, just go through the commutative and associative laws of uh, addition of cuts. Theorem 132, um, which is it's a theorem that's that's used a couple of times. I'm not going to go through the proof of it, but uh, it simply says that given any rational number a, uh, and given a cut, there is a lower number uh, x of the cut and an upper number u for the cut, such that the difference or uh, the upper number minus the lower number is equal to uh, the the rational number. So this is. Uh, I guess it's quite an, an interesting theorem. It's not unexpected in any way. Um, like I say, I'm not going to go through the proofs. I want to to get moving onto uh, onto the, uh, the the more interesting stuff really. So then we come on to theorem 140, which says that if psi is greater than eta, then the equation eta plus nu equals psi has exactly one solution. Um, Okay, so this is uh, completely analogous to the situations that we had with rational numbers and fractions. There's going to be a bit more work to do uh, with this one, and it's going to go in two parts. What we're going to do is we're going to construct a, a set, just like in Theorem 129, we're going to construct a set. We're going to actually show that that set is indeed a cut, uh, and then show that that cut satisfies the, the relevant uh, criteria that it does actually... Uh, satisfy this equation. The, the cut that we're going to construct, we're going to eventually call uh, this thing here new. Okay, so I'm going to need quite a bit of space for the, the proof of theorem 140, because there's quite a bit to it. Um, what we're going to start off with is um, forming a, a set, a particular set of, of rational numbers. So we're going to look at um, the set of rationals of the form x minus y where 
um, x is a lower number for uh, psi and y is an upper number for uh, eta. Okay, so what we're wanting to show then is that this set is actually a cut. Um, so we need to show that it satisfies the, the, the criteria that are uh, set out in the definition of a cut. We're going to use the second version. Uh, so we need to show that our set is non-empty. We need to show that it's non-empty and also that uh, there is a rational number that is not contained in our uh, in our set so um, first of all let's show that it's it's non-empty that there is actually a number in there so since um, uh, psi uh, oh, psi is uh, greater than or equal to eta then we can choose um, an x uh, sorry a y uh, which is a, a, a lower number for uh, Xi and an upper number for uh, Eta. And now because Xi is a, a cut, then for every lower number there is a, a greater lower number. So let's choose X to be a lower number for uh, Xi such that uh, X is greater than Y. So therefore, if we think about the equation now, uh, Y plus U equals X, the solution to this equation is going to be the rational number U equals X minus Y. So there is actually a rational number of the form X minus Y where X is um, a lower number for uh, psi and y is an upper number for eta. Okay, and it's worth pointing out at this stage, just as a little aside, that um, y plus x minus y, or we could say x minus y plus y is equal to x. Okay, so that's just a little uh, thing that we're probably uh, going to need to use in a uh, in a second or two. Okay, so now we need to show that the there is a rational number that is not contained in our set. So let uh, x1 be an upper number for uh, psi. So psi being a cut we know that there must be a number that is not in Xi. Uh, so let one of those numbers at least be uh, this number X1. And therefore we know that X1 is greater than X. Okay. Uh, but we know that um, X minus Y is less than x minus y plus y which is equal to x which is less than x1. So x minus y is just a, an arbitrary number in our set and it's certainly less than x minus y plus y but we've seen that x minus y plus y is equal to x and x is less than x1 so therefore with this being a, a lower number for um, uh, Xi, uh, it must be less than any, any upper number. And we've shown here that any arbitrary um, number of our set must be less than any upper number of Xi. So no upper number of Xi is going to be in our set. So therefore our set doesn't contain all rational numbers. So this bit here is part one of our uh, criteria. So let's move on to part two. So we need to show now that for any number in our set, 
the set also contains all numbers less than it. So let's say we've got uh, a number of our set x minus y and we choose a number u which is less than um, x minus y. So therefore uh, u plus y is less than x minus y uh, plus y. But we've already seen that x minus y plus y is equal to x. So in particular we've got u plus y is less than x. So let x2 be equal to u plus y. Then evidently x2 is less than uh, x. And we can say from this that u is going to be equal to uh, x2 minus y. So x2 minus y is the unique solution to this equation. But u, we've already seen uh, by definition of u, by uh, the, the choice of u, u is less than x minus y, so therefore x2 minus y must be less than x minus y. And now x2 uh, is a lower number for xi, because x is a lower number for xi, and with xi being a cut, um, it contains all of the numbers that are less than x. So x2 must be a lower number for xi. y is an upper number for eta, so therefore we've got a, a lower number for xi minus an upper number for eta. This number must be in our set. So since u was chosen arbitrarily, therefore um, u is in our, is in, is in our set. And that gives us part two of our criteria. So now let's move on to part three. Uh, since psi is a cut, then for any lower number x, we can choose uh, a greater lower number x3. Okay, um, but we also know that, how am I going to write this? Uh, x3 is equal to x3 minus y plus y. So this is completely analogous to uh, this situation here, or up here as I wrote it up here. And also uh, x minus y plus y is equal to x. So x3 is greater than x, then therefore this must be greater than this here. And therefore, just kind of cancelling out the y's. So this is something that's proved in the section on rational numbers, not in my videos, but in, in Landau's book, uh, that uh, these two, two numbers here must be uh, as such, x3 minus y greater than x minus y. But uh, x3 was by our uh, by the choice of x3 it was a, a lower number for xi uh, greater than this lower number which exists because xi is itself cut so therefore this number here is of the form lower number for xi minus upper number for eta so therefore it must be in our set it's it's of exactly the right form and it's greater than this x minus y but x minus y is a, an arbitrary uh, arbitrary number in our in our set. So that gives us the third part of uh, our definition for a cut. Therefore our set is indeed a cut. Okay so we're going to cut uh, the, the cut that we've just constructed we're going to denote as follows. So denote uh, the cut just constructed by uh, new. So what we want to show is that uh, the cut new plus eta, uh, that every, uh, every lower number of new plus eta 
is also a lower number for the cut Xi. Okay, and similarly, every lower number for Xi is also a lower number for uh, nu plus eta. So this is in accordance with the definition of equality of cuts given earlier in the video. So if we can show that uh, that these lower numbers coincide, then we've got equality, which is exactly what we, we need according to the, the theorem. So a lower number of, of this is going to be of the form um, x minus y plus y1. Okay, so where x is uh, a lower number for uh, xi, y is a an upper number for eta, and y1 is a lower number for eta. We've also got that um, x must be greater than y and we've also necessarily got that uh, y is greater than uh, y1 uh, because y is a an upper number for eta and y1 is a, a lower number for eta okay so then uh, we take the uh, x minus y plus y1 and to this we add y minus y1 and we can use a bit of manipulation of of, uh, of this expression uh, using uh, associativity to get x minus y plus y1 plus y minus y1. Well y1 plus y minus y1 is just equal to y and x minus y plus y is just equal to x. Okay and we've also got that uh, x minus y plus y is greater than x minus y plus y1 so this follows straight from from here but this is equal to x so therefore it follows that x is greater than x minus y plus y1 So therefore, from this it follows that because this is a lower number for um, nu, and this is a lower number for eta, this is a lower number for xi, then since xi is uh, actually a cut, then any for any uh, given number in xi, um, any smaller number is also going to be in xi. So because this number here uh, is smaller than x, x being a lower number for xi, then this must also be in xi. So this is a lower number for uh, nu plus eta, because this is a lower number for nu and this is a lower number for eta. So it's a, this is a lower number by definition for the, the cut nu plus eta. Therefore, any lower number for nu plus eta must also be a lower number for xi. So we've done one of the directions. We've shown that any lower number for this is also a lower number for, for this. Okay, moving on to the next part then. So that's that. We need to go in the other direction. There's going to be two parts to this. So let y be um, a lower number for xi, but also an upper number for um, eta. 
So we're going to look at two cases here. One where uh, y is a lower number for xi and an upper number for eta, and then we're going to look separately at the case when y is a lower number for xi and a lower number for, uh, for eta. Okay, and choose a uh, lower number for xi such that um, x is greater than y. This is possible because xi is a cut, and so for any number that it contains there is always a greater, uh, greater number. Okay, now thinking back to theorem 132, I knew there was a reason that I'd included that theorem. Uh, we can choose uh, y1, which is uh, a lower number for eta, and y2, which is an upper number for eta, such that uh, y2 minus y1 is equal to x minus y. So from this it necessarily follows that y is uh, greater than y1 since uh, y uh, is an upper number for eta, y1 is a lower number for uh, eta and we can also say that y2 plus y minus y1 is equal to, with the help of this, because we can uh, rearrange this, so to speak, to say that y2 is equal to x minus y plus y1. So this is equal to uh, x minus y plus y1 plus y minus y1 which is equal to using commutativity uh, not commutative, associativity sorry x minus y plus y1 plus y minus y1 so y1 plus y minus y1 is just equal to y so I get x minus y plus uh, y which is, of course, equal to x. So therefore, y2 plus y minus y1 is equal to x, and therefore, uh, y minus y1 is equal to x minus uh, y2. So add uh, y1 to both sides of this, then we get y minus y1 plus y1, which happens to equal y, is equal to uh, x minus y2 plus y1. So remember, y was a lower number for xi. And this here, let's just inspect this a little bit more. So x is, um, by our choice, where did we choose it? Oh, here, a lower number for xi. y2 was chosen as uh, to be an upper number for eta. So that means that this is definitely going to be uh, a lower number for uh, nu. And then y1 is a lower number for eta. So therefore... We've got a lower number for nu plus a lower number for eta, so this must be in the cut. It must be a lower number for nu plus eta. So therefore, uh, a lower number for xi is also a lower number for uh, nu plus eta, on the condition that the, the lower number for xi that we chose originally be an upper number for eta. So now, in the case that uh, we choose uh, y to be a lower number for xi and a lower number for uh, eta, then what we can say is that any such y that we choose, um, so let's say, let's make it z actually, so let's say we choose z 
and Z is uh, a lower number for Xi and a lower number for Eta, then Z must definitely be less than any Y, any such Y that we choose, where Y is exactly as described here. So therefore, uh, since uh, nu plus uh, eta is a cut, we know it's a cut, so we've already shown that it's, it's a cut, then any such z must be less than uh, the number that we got here. Okay? Um, so therefore, because nu plus, xi, uh, nu plus eta is a cut, uh, and this is a lower number for that cut, then any number smaller than this must also be in the cut and therefore Z, Z being a lower number for Xi and a lower number for Eta must also be in the cut um, uh, nu plus Eta. So what we've shown then is that um, any lower number for this cut, nu plus Eta is a lower number for Xi and any lower number for Xi is also a lower number for uh, nu plus uh, Eta. So Therefore, we've proved theorem 140. Something that I just quickly want to mention that I didn't really make clear in the, the proof that I've just gone through is uh, the, the reason that I pointed this out, uh, that y is greater than uh, y1. Um, the fact that y is greater than y1 justifies uh, this here, this uh, y minus y1, because if uh, y wasn't greater than y1, this wouldn't make any sense. So I didn't really make that clear as I was going through the proof, so I just wanted to clarify that. So unfortunately I didn't have space to write this um, on the board um, in, the, in the previous part of the video. Uh, but just to, to finish off this section on addition of cuts, we've got definition 35, which says that the new uh, of theorem 140 that we've just constructed is denoted by Xi minus eta. So this is um, similar to how things have, uh, have happened in regards to rational numbers and, and fractions and things like that. Um, similar warnings apply to this as apply to rational numbers and fractions as well that the subtraction here is not a it's not an honest operation it's not a genuine operation that's been defined and all of the uh, properties and everything uh, proved and, and derived. So it's got to be used with care, with the same amount of care as we we would use um, subtraction when it comes to rational numbers and fractions. But this about wraps things up for addition. So I'm going to move on to the last part of this video now, which is multiplication. That's not um, the end of uh, cuts on uh, the section on cuts. There is actually uh, a bit more that I need to go through. But for this video, I'm just going to go through multiplication and then. Uh, that's going to be it. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at uh, multiplication of, of cuts. So in a similar way with addition, we don't start out straight away with the definition of multiplication of cuts. We actually construct a cut that we're going to basically identify with the product um, of these two uh, cuts, Xi and Eta. So let sin eta be cuts, then the set of all rational numbers which are representable in the form x, y, x being a lower number for xi, for xi and y is a lower number for eta, is itself a cut. So again, um, we're just assuming that this thing is a set from the outset, not that it's a cut. Um, we'd actually go on to prove that it is a cut. I'm not going to go through the proof of this. Um, it's actually a lot easier than uh, the, the case for addition. Uh, but I'm not going to go through it because I, it's, uh, uh, there's not really any need for me to, to do so. And similarly with addition, no number of this set can be written as a product of an upper number of Xi and an upper number of Eta. But again, it says nothing about if you've got an, an upper number for one and a lower number for the other. So if you've got an upper number for Xi and a lower number for Eta, that might indeed be uh, in the, the set. We can guarantee that something is going to be in our set if they're both lower numbers, but it might, may or may not be in the set if we've got uh, a lower number and an upper number um, for the, the individual cuts. Definition 36, the cut constructed in theorem 141 is denoted uh, xi dot eta, 
Uh, usually the dot is uh, suppressed and we just get uh, Xi Eta. And then theorems 142 to 144 just give the uh, commutative, associative and distributive laws for uh, multiplication of, uh, of cuts. And then uh, this one, this is quite an important thing, it's going to play quite an important role. Uh, theorem 150, for any rational number R, the set of all rational numbers less than R uh, forms um, a cut. So I'm going to quickly run through this. Uh, so we need to, uh, again, uh, prove that it satisf this set of rational numbers actually sat satisfies all of the conditions for it to be a cut. So let's have a look at uh, part one. So part one is that uh, we need to show that it's uh, the set is non-empty and that there is a, a number that is uh, not actually in our set. Well, um, for any R, for any R, uh, there is um, an X which is less than R. So X is going to be in our set because uh, our set is the set of all rational numbers less than R. So X is uh, in the set. So it's not empty. Similarly, uh, we can say that, uh, well, not similarly actually, but we can say that R is not in the set uh, since R is not less than R. So we've shown that there is actually a rational number that is not in the set, namely R itself. So let's have a look at the second uh, criteria. So uh, we need to show that um, we're actually going to go with the first definition here of, um, of a cut. So we're going to show that any uh, lower number, uh, sorry, any a number that is not in the set is greater than any number that is in the set. So we can't talk about lower numbers and upper numbers just yet because we don't know that it's actually a, uh, a cut. So uh, for any number in the set, uh, so if x is in the set, then x must be less than r. And if y is not in the set, then y must be greater than or equal to r. And therefore, x is less than y. So since these were arbitrarily, and it's as simple as that by the way, but um, since this was arbitrarily chosen, and this was arbitrarily chosen, then we can say that any arbitrarily chosen number that is less than r is definitely less than any arbitrarily chosen number that is greater than or equal to r, and therefore any number that is in the set is definitely less than any number that is not in the set. So that's part two. And then part three. Uh, so for part three, we need to show that um, for any uh, number that is in the set, there is always a greater, uh, a greater number that is still in the set. So let um, X be in the set. Then certainly X is less than R. And now, um, just like with fractions, um, which I, sh I showed in, uh, it must have been the second video, uh, between any two, any two non-equal fractions, there's always a third fraction. I think it was theorem 55. Uh, well, a similar thing applies to rational numbers. Between any two non-equal rational numbers, there is always a third rational number. So these two rational numbers are certainly not non-equal. Uh, so I can choose a third rational number, let's say uh, z, which lies between them. Well, z being less than r must be in the set, but z is greater than x. So for any arbitrarily chosen um, number in our set, we can find another one that is still in the set but greater than it. So that's all three conditions satisfied and therefore um, R is indeed a cut, uh, sorry, the, the, the set of all rational numbers less than R is indeed a cut. 
And here we go now with the, the last little bit regate, uh, relating to uh, multiplication of, uh, um, of cuts. So uh, definition 37, the cut constructed in theorem 150, just proven, uh, is denoted R star. So R could be any uh, rational number. In particular, um, if R is equal to the, the integer 1, remember an integer is, is itself a rational number, uh, then the cut determined by 1, uh, the rational number 1, is uh, denoted 1 star, for example. And we see that in theorem 151, that uh, the cut xi multiplied by the cut determined by the rational number 1, so 1 star, is equal to xi. So this gives um, a like a multiplicative identity, really, for, for cuts. And then theorem 152, for given xi, uh, the equation xi nu equals one star has a solution nu. So this would be, in a way, uh, multiplicative inverses or uh, what you might think of roughly as reciprocals, although uh, I wouldn't take it too literally um, at this stage. And then theorem 153, uh, the equation uh, eta nu equals xi, where xi and eta are given, has exactly one solution nu. So um, I'm, I'm going to concentrate really on the, the, the existence here, the, the uniqueness I'm not um, too bothered about showing. It follows from some of the earlier uh, theorems. Okay, so the proof of this goes as follows. Then we choose uh, a tau such that uh, eta uh, times tau is equal to uh, one star, so eta is one of our given um, cuts and tau exists uh, according to theorem uh, 152 and then we choose uh, nu equals um, uh, xi tau, I think that's going to work Okay, and then, therefore, uh, eta nu equals eta uh, xi tau, uh, which equals eta tau xi, which equals eta tau xi. So this is um, just substituting in the, the expression here for, for new uh, xi, t, uh, xi tau, sorry, and then using um, commutativity of cuts under multiplication, and then using associativity of cuts under multiplication. And now eta tau is equal to one star. So it's one star times xi, which is again using commutativity, xi times one star, and then using theorem 151, we just get xi. So therefore, the solution that we're looking for is this uh, xi tau, or tau xi, whichever way around you want to, to write it, where tau is um, the solution to this equation here. In a way, the reciprocal of uh, eta, if you want to think about it that way. Um, and then, so that was much easier than the, the case with addition, much, much easier. And then we can uh, finally go on to definition 38. So the uh, new that, that we've just um, found in theorem 153 is denoted by xi divided by eta. So the cut uh, formed by the division of xi by um, eta. And that uh, finishes everything off really for, for multiplication of cuts and in fact it finishes off um, the first part really of cuts because it's a big section. If, um, in my opinion this is possibly the most difficult section of the, the book to get through. Um, just because of its its fiddliness, really de dealing with all of these cuts, um, we've still got a bit more to to go on to with cuts. So I'm going to make another video on that, but I'm going to leave it here with this video. 
So thank you for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.